Hey, I'm Alex, and today we're going to work on the mute time problem from PZ1 of CS50's introduction to programming with Python. Let's first take a look at the problem description. Suppose that you're in a country where it's customary to eat breakfast between 7 and 8, lunch between 12 and 13, and dinner between 18 and 7, 19. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a program that could tell you what to eat when? In meal.py, implement a program that prompts the user for a time and outputs whether it's breakfast time, lunch time or dinner time. If it's not time for a meal, don't output anything at all. Assume that the user's inputs will be formatted in 20 hour time as um, hash colon hash hash or hash hash colon hash hash and assume that each meal's time range is inclusive. For instance, whether it's 7, 8, 701, 759 or 8, or any time in between, it's time for breakfast. Structure your program per the below, wherein convert is function that can be called by main, that converts time, a string in 24 hour format to the corresponding number of hours as a float. For instance, given a time like 730 as a string, um, convert should return 7.5. Okay, so we have three functions here that we're going to copy in a bit. Actually, there are two functions, uh, and then we're calling the main one. So let's begin by setting up our file system. I'll first enter my PC1 tutorial folder. Um, if you have one, feel free to open it. I just like keeping my files inside like dedicated folders for every P set. So we said one tutorial. And now I'm going to make a new directory. So make directory meal. Um, right, I think it was this. Okay, yes. Now I have created a folder, but I need to explicitly say that I want to go inside of that new newly created folder. So I'm going to use CD meal. So change directory to meal. Once I'm in, I can use the command code meal.py in order to actually create the file, the Python file inside. There we go. And now we're actually ready to start implementing our solution. The first thing I'm going to do is copy um, the structure that has already been provided to us by the CS50 staff. So we have one main function, one convert function, and then we're just calling the main function. So um, in main, what do we have? Well, in main, we should prompt the user for input. After the user has entered the input, we're going to send it to convert. The convert will return our float, and then we're going to output the result back in main. So we're going to start here, prompt the user for some input. After we have the input, we're going to come here inside of our convert function, sorry for this arrow, uh, but we're going to come into our convert function. It's going to convert the time in the proper format. And then we're going to take it back to the main function so that it can return the final output. That's how it, it's going to work. All right. So let's begin by prompting the user for some input. How can we do this? Well, we can use the input method. And inside of it, we can write some kind of a prompt to the user. So we put quotes. And let's see the original prompt used by the CS50 staff. It's what time is it? So what, oops, what time is it? Okay, there we go. We have our prompt. And once the user enters their answer, we would like to somehow store it, right? Because if we just like ask them and then forget what it was, why why do we even do this, right? Um, we need to store it somewhere. So I'm going to create a variable, which is going to be called time equals the result of this input method. So um, if I come here and just say print, time I should be able to see it I'm just going to copy this um, so that it doesn't uh, I'll need to have something here. okay that's random you don't need to write this I just want to execute 
the, the file. Okay, so I'm going to say python um, meal.py. What time is it? It's 4.56 and it just prints the same thing. But we have successfully stored it in our variable. Once we have the time, we want to send it to this convert function, right? The thing that I explained um, a while ago. So we take this time and we send it as an argument here in this function. Okay, let's do this. How can we code this function? Well, we can just write, uh, write the name of the function, which is convert, and pass in this time that we've taken from the user. Now, please note that these, like these two variables have to match, but like the name we have here and here on lines two and four does not have to match the name you have on line seven. So for instance, I could call this current time and here it will be current time again. And this will still work because whenever I call this function, the thing I enter will automatically replace this variable. So it will just be like time will have the value of current time. Okay. So we have called this function. Now let's implement it actually. So what do we need? First, we need to take like, like we have this time for colon 56, but we have to find a way to split it and get the, the, the hours and the minutes separately, right? So how can we do this? Well, we already know the split method from last time, right? Um, so we can say um, hours and minutes, or just means, um, I'm going to write it this way, equals, now you just list the two variables with a comma, and we say time dot split by a colon. Now, don't worry if that's not exactly clear to you. I'm going to explain it in more detail uh, in a bit. I just want to come here and print my hours and my minutes to ensure that it works properly. And then I'm going to come back to the explanation. Print, print. And I run my program again. 456. Okay, there we go. We have the, hour, the hours and the minutes separately. Now, how does this work? Whenever I use time.split, I'm saying, uh, find this colon somewhere in my string. Let me draw a bit here. Find a colon here. So there's a colon right here in the middle, right? And split my string into two parts. The One of them is everything from on the left of the colon. The other thing is anything on the right of the colon. So our, like, our first string is going to have the four in it. And the other one's going to have the 56. And then I'm just saying, take the first one that we have, take the first value. Um, why can I not switch? Okay. Uh, take the first value and assign it to hours. So hours is going to be four. Then I'm saying, take the second value and assign it to minutes. I'm going to draw it down here. So minutes is going to be 56. That's how this works. Okay, so we have our hours, we have our minutes. Now we want to convert the entire thing into a float. So if we have, let me give another example. Oops. Um, if we have uh, 3.30, we would like to convert this to 3.5, right? Because that's three and a half hours. So we don't actually need to, the only thing we need to do is just convert these to integers because currently they're strings. I received a string like this thing and I would like to therefore convert these to integers because if they're strings, I cannot really like subtract, multiply, add, divide. I cannot do anything. So let's first convert them to integers. Um, probably there are multiple ways to achieve this. But maybe the easiest way for you will be to just say like hours uh, int and minutes int equals and then we just list the two values. So int of hours and int of minutes like this. 
And once we have these integers, so we're ready to start doing some math. Like it's very simple math, I promise. The only thing we need to do is like, think about how can we convert minutes to hours? Because we have to represent the hours as a float. How do we convert minutes into hours? Well, we divide by 60, right? We know this from math class, but uh, even if we don't know this, if we have 60 minutes, if we have 60 minutes, then how many hours do we have? Well, we have exactly one hour, right? So we're dividing 60 by, we're dividing the minutes by 60. And we have a similar example with 120 minutes, if we have 120 minutes. How many hours are these? These are two hours, right? Because we have the minutes or 120 divided by 60, which is 120 divided by 60, which is two. So that's the formula we're going to use. So we can say uh, time float, time as a float, because up until this point, it was a string. Now we want to convert it into float and represent the hours. It's going to equal the original hours as an int, right? Plus the minutes as an integer divided by 60. Okay, so uh, I already explained how like um, how 120 minutes when we divide by 60 results in two hours. But if we've had some previous like if we've had say um, two point hmm, two two hours 24 minutes. How can we convert it into float? Well, we have two hours plus, and then how many hours do these 24 minutes equal? So if we divide 24 by 60, we have 0 0.4. So plus 0 0.4, uh, I'm going to use this syntax, and this results in 2.4. I hope this is clear. We just take the previous hours that we've already had and add the new minutes, which are converted into hours as well. Okay, and once we have this, we can just safely return time as a float. And I'm actually going to come here and print it just to ensure that it works properly. So I'm going to rerun my function and say 3.30, we expect to see 3.5, right? Okay, there we go. We take the three and then 30 minutes are half an hour, right? So 0 0.5 and we have three plus 0 0.5. These are three and a half hours. Okay, we are done with this part. And now the only thing we have to do is kind of save this, the result of this uh, in a variable. So I can say time floats. Notice that this can be the same name. Uh, let me just put the equal sign. These can match, but they do not have to. If you want, you can put another variable here. For instance, um, formatted time. So what's going to happen is we're going to call this convert function and it's going to return some value. For instance, um, for instance, 3.5. And then this value, 3.5, is going to be stored inside of this formatted time variable. And once we have it, we can print it, but I would like to see what, oh, no, we, we don't want to directly print it, but we actually want to check whether it's between like certain time intervals. So the first one is between seven and eight. So if formatted time is greater than or equal to seven, and at the same time, it's uh, formatted time is less than or equal to nine. So it, if it's between seven and nine, then I want it to print breakfast time, right? Print breakfast time. Okay. Then what's the second option? If this is false, we have another option. L if the formatted time is between 12 and 30. So if formatted time is greater than or equal to 12 and it's um, if 
from time to time is less than or equal to 13. So if it's between 12 and 13, we want to print lunchtime. And the final option, if the first two are false, then the third option is L if the formatted time is between, let's see, between six and seven. That's, um, that's dinner time, right? Yep. So if it's greater than or equal to 18, and at the same time, it's less than, it's less than or equal to 19. We want to print dinner time. So some of you may be wondering why we are using end. Well, because if we only have like, if formatted time is greater than 18, but if it's 21, it, it's still not valid, right? 21 is not lunch time. It, it has to strictly fall between 18 and 19. That's why we're using these ends here. Okay. I think it's time to first like manually test the program and then run check 50. So let's get some examples from here. If we write 700, zero, zero, we expect to see breakfast time. Oops. So 700, zero, zero, breakfast time. Cool. Then we have 730, breakfast time. 730, breakfast time. Then we have um, 1242, lunch time. 1242 lunchtime, okay. Then we have um, 1832, 1832, dinner time, okay. And 1111 should not return anything. So it should be like, it should not return any output. Okay, perfect. So let's now actually test it using check 50. So we we'll copy this command and run it. And we can see that all of our tests are green. So we've successfully solved the problem. That was everything for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I'm going to see you in the next one.